Hey troops, welcome back to the channel. My name's Ryan, I'm a former commando from the United Kingdom and today we're going to be reacting to terrifying moment Ukrainian forces cripple Russian army in near Bakhmut. This video looks um, looks pretty cool guys. It's by a channel called, um, bear with me, Ultimate American. So, you know, I love, I love America. So let's just get into it guys. Original video link will be in the description as always. Let's do it man. Ukrainian forces have broken through Russia's defenses near the Orokovo Vasilivka settlements in the Bakhmut area. Ukrainian soldiers are already beginning to dig in within the new lines. So this video was about 13 days ago for context with regards dates and stuff. Not too long ago. Within the last 24 hours, in addition, Ukraine has launched 12 air attacks on Russian troop and military vehicle. Russian forces were pushed out from their positions near the village of Orokovo Vasilivka. Orkovko Vasilivka. Now, they have no reason to disbelieve that this footage isn't from there, but that looks quite... That doesn't look like Ukraine. I know certain parts of Ukraine, especially um, in the southeastern areas, looks quite tropical. I don't know if I'm wrong for s stipulating that, but that doesn't really look like Ukraine. Lying northwest of Bakhmut, Ukrainian troops have achieved partial success in their advance and solidified new positions. According to the general staff, Ukraine is conducting offensive operations both north and south of the city of Bakhmut. Russia is deploying its reserves, but suffering heavy losses. The general staff of Ukraine's armed forces spokesperson, Andriy Kovalov, said on July 20th, Over the past day, Ukrainian troops repelled all enemy attacks near Orokovo Vasilivka, Priorivka, and Ivanivsky. Russians tried to regain their lost positions near Kudyumivka, but had no success. Russians launched airstrikes near the Donetsk region's Pivnikna. Over 10 settlements were affected by Russian artillery strikes. Wow, you can see the artillery coming in thick and fast there, guys. Absolutely decimating the area. We've seen in pictures and other stock footage, um, stock footage, other footage, pertain to Ukraine, just how torn up the land is, okay? Most of the areas in which they've been operating is not even... <laughs> You're not even going to be able to use it in the years to come. So whoever has charge of that land going forward is going to have a bloody hard job getting it ready for actually, you know, resettling individuals in. It's um, it's it's devastating to say the least, man. Strikes. Earlier, the military reported advances also on Bakhmut's southern flank. Deputy Defense Minister Hanna Maliar said on July 19th that the Ukrainian troops liberated seven square kilometers in the Bakhmut direction over the past week. That's a lot. So these look like they're hunting down um, trench formations. We've seen that you've got specific teams in Ukraine actually going and and basically hunting down the guys who's in the trenches to clear out the trenches because the trenches are actually stopping, you know, them expanding their area of operations. So what you've found is you've got mechanized infantries, um, bolstering with tanks, and in this case, some form of tank with a, I don't know, is that a 50 cal um, or a GPMG equivalent, like a general purpose machine gun type thing. Um, just going through, scouting the area and literally doing the business on all of the uh, individuals that we can see within these trench systems, okay? Even to the point of which they're using the tanks to just maul over some of the trenches, guys, getting stuck right in there. It's crazy. Fighting has intensified at multiple points along the one 500-kilometer, 930-mile front line. Battles are also raging along the southern front in Zaporizhia, where Ukrainian forces are making minimal gains and coming up against formidable Russian fortifications. The Russians have also been pressuring the Kupiansk and Lyman fronts while focusing their efforts on the Zaporizhia and Kherson fronts to prevent further advance of Ukrainian forces. Anna Maliar, Ukraine's deputy minister of defense, recently claimed that Kiev's forces had destroyed six Russian ammunition depots in the space of 24 hours, a remark that hinted at Ukrainian tactics. In the ongoing war, Ukrainian forces continue to deal significant blows to Russian tanks, with the current counteroffensive potentially hastening the destruction of Russian armored vehicles. That is insane. The reasons for this one-sided out- Whoa! Need to have a look at this again. 
I wasn't expecting that. He's just literally been taken out from the tree line. Obviously an ambush, but like, yeah. The reasons for this. Right, so he's taken, the guy's been taken out literally just from that track there, troops, which is crazy when you think about it. Let's have a little skeggers on for you guys. So that's where, it looks like just a one man. One man, obviously going to be a few people there, but they were lying in wait, ambush, ready to go, boom. We're talking metres away. <clears throat> I don't know, man. Same routes, you can tell that the same routes has been used up and down here, like high. One-sided outcome are manifold. The Ukrainian forces' determination and tactical expertise have played a vital role, along with their possession of advanced anti-tank weaponry, rockets, artillery, and armored vehicles. This combination of factors has proven highly effective in countering the Russian tanks. The conflict in Ukraine has sparked discussions about the future of modern warfare and the relevance of main battle tanks. While Wait, tanks are unlikely to be completely phased out, their combat utility has come under scrutiny due to the... Okay. That's just been... Absolutely destroyed. The effectiveness of anti-armor weapons and tactics demonstrated in this war. The situation has underscored the importance of employing tanks strategically and using them in combat. So the turret's been taken off completely there. We've seen that a lot with uh, tanks in Russia. Combination with other assets for optimal results on the battlefield. Throughout the course of the conflict, Ukraine has shown that with timely and consistent help, it can prevail on the battlefield even when its troops are outnumbered. Just as American and British handheld Javelin and N-Law missile systems helped Ukraine halt the advance of Russian tanks around Kiev in the early stages of the invasion, American high-mobility artillery rocket systems known as HIMARS have since changed the face of the conflict and helped Ukraine liberate a significant amount of territory previously occupied by the Russians. I would say the HIMARS has been instrumental in actually getting Ukraine to the point of where they're at right now, although it's not a, um, it's not dotted at the end and underlined. It's still a, um, an ongoing horrible war. I think it would have been over a long time ago, personally, and not in Ukraine's favour. It had... The HIMARS specifically not being employed in Ukraine. And reason being, obviously, you know, we see how the Russian tactics work out. They just throw an unbelievable amount of artillery fire in areas, in some cases, that they don't even need to, but they just barrage areas like, like hell. That's what they've always done, all right, for the past 100 years. Um, it works in many ways. It halts your movement, but how, how can you combat that? Well, these things actually combat that. They combated the ammunition stores. They combated the actual kit and equipment itself that they were deploying these artillery um, barrages from. So they were quite instrumental in the early days. I remember covering the war quite quite a, a, a lot, and these things were very much instrumental. I have no doubt that they're still continuing to cause havoc on the battlefield in a good way. Such aid, when promptly and consistently supplied, dramatically improves the odds of a decisive Ukrainian victory over Russia. The Ukrainian defense forces have gained tactical ground near the city of Bakhmut in Donetsk Oblast. Although the large concentration of Russian troops in this area of the front line indicates the strategic importance... Look at that. Bakhmut city. It's a small portion of it, absolutely destroyed. This city was, um, we could say it was pointless, but it was a bloody big old area, guys. And Ukraine, you know, obviously tried their very best to hold it. And um, the place is absolutely destroyed, troops, when you think about the loss of life in that area. Absolute crazy, man. I don't know what it's going to take to be able to take back Bakhmut City like whole as a whole. I don't know, guys, but we're going to have to put an awful lot of kit and equipment and weaponry within that area and resources that arguably they don't really have. You know, you're going to be pinching from one area to put into this area, and for what? Strategically speaking, what are you putting them there for? importance of this town to Russia. Whoa, that Ukrainian defenders are holding the initiative on the Bakhmut front, advancing along the flanks. The progress made by the defense forces in June, including mm. reaching the necessary dominant heights, now allows them to exercise fire control. 
The scorched earth tactics the enemy used earlier are now turning against them. Our troops have had tactical progress. Scorched earth, what does he mean by that? However, the enemy's engagement of such large forces here indicates that this is still a strategic point for them. All conditions have been created to retake Bakhmut, but it must be done with significantly fewer losses than the Russians suffered to capture the city. Yeah, true. Colonel General Oleksandr Sirsky, commander of the ground forces of the armed forces of Ukraine, said, In an interview with the BBC Ukrainian service Bakhmut is of strategic importance, primarily because it is the center of concentration of the main directions and roads. The roads from Debaltsev, Seversk, Horlivka, Kostiantinivka, and Sloviansk pass through the city. Using a well-developed road network, Russian troops can attack in at least three such operational directions. Ukraine's forces had also taken control that? of the main... What is that? ...main commanding heights around Bakhmut and established fire control over entrances... That is crazy fight. ...and exits to the shattered city. Various dominant heights are concentrated around Bakhmut, which allows troops to control most of the terrain around on the approaches to the city, which increases its role as a springboard for further offensive act. The armed forces of Ukraine are advancing in the area of Bakhmut. Every day, the soldiers are progressing forward a distance of 0.5 to 1 kilometer. Western analysts confirm Ukrainian claims of gains in the Bakhmut sector in recent days. In its latest daily assessment, the Institute for the Study of War said Ukrainian forces conducted counteroffensive operations on at least three sectors of the front on July 19th and made gains in these areas. Earlier this month, Kiev said Russian forces in Bakhmut were trapped and the city was under Ukrainian fire control. And he's still continuing to move forward despite that area being a target. Awesome video, guys. Terrifying moment. Ukrainian forces crippled Russian army uh, near Bakhmut. I like that channel, Ultimate American. Got 200,000 subscribers at the moment. Um, hopefully they don't mind me reacting to it. Hopefully not, guys. But go show them some love. Fantastic channel. Drop a comment below if you like this type of content, if you want me to continue to do this type of content. Let me know what you want to see from the channel, you know, because um, I'm all open for ideas, guys. Thank you for stopping by. Like, share, and subscribe. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.